Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, and welcome to today's episode of Between Friends. I'm so glad you joined me to learn about our top tips for machine embroidered applique. And many of you have experience, and some of you have never tried it before, like our friend over in the Netherlands. Uh, where is she? She said that she's never tried it. Now I can't find her. Oh, my goodness. Well, Jay uh, Bodner wants to, in Portugal, wants to know how to do better applique. Oh, and here is Terry Shopaholic. She has uh, not tried it yet. You know, applique is a great technique to embrace. I tell you, you get terrific results very quickly without a lot of thread, right? Of course, we love thread here at Dime. As you can see, we love thread. And we're going to be talking about thread today, but, you know, fabric adds another interesting ele element to uh, machine embroidery when you do applique. So I have some top tips for you and let's go ahead and get started. And oh, here's our good friend, Reen Wilcoxon. She's joining us from Embroidery Garden. We love to have her here. In fact, she's going to be coming on the show pretty soon, pretty soon. And I'll let you know when that is. Um, and Marjorie Hersberger, just lovely to have you back. You just got back from Ocean City. Oh, the Jersey Beach has fed your soul. It is beautiful in Ocean City, New Jersey. I hope you had a slice of pizza from Mac and Manco and maybe an ice cream cone at Core Brothers. Yeah, I guess I know a little bit about Ocean City, New Jersey, right? All right, so let's go ahead and switch to PowerPoint so I can share with you what we're gonna be talking about today. It, it's kind of the do's and don'ts of uh, a machine embroidered applique. And do you remember the glamor do's or don'ts? When we were kids, that was always a, a page in Glamour Magazine about what didn't you want to happen? Like you never wanted to have your slip showing beyond your skirt. That was a horror today. Everything goes, it's not an issue, but... Um, Anyway, that's where I got the do's and don'ts. We're gonna talk about, will, will we pre-cut or will we trim in the hoop? Sometimes it's appropriate for either technique and you're gonna find out what gives the best results. Now, do you use a fusible or, or are you just gonna lay your fabric right on top of the host fabric or, or, or your base fabric or are you going to add either a spray adhesive or a fusible web. And then of course, the end result is always about the thread. So we are definitely going to talk about what kinds of threads to choose when uh, for the applique and maybe some interior sections of applique because you know, it's not just an outline, not just an outline. Oh, and here's Donna Bond joining us from Somerset, England. Well, thanks for joining us this evening, Donna. It's lovely to have you here. Okay. First thing I want to do actually is to jump over into my software so that I can show you exactly what an applique design is. And here is that very same applique design that you saw in our promotion. And I'm going to use the uh, simulator so we can watch the design. You know, we'll zoom through it a, a little quickly. Now it's doing the stem and then it's gonna do the leaves. So normally in applique, the embroidery is digitized so that anything that's in the background is actually going to stitch first. And these leaves and stem are considered in the background, even though when we look at the final design, it doesn't really appear to be background. But what we wouldn't want to happen is for our applique fabric to be placed down and then have those uh, leaves stitch on top of the applique. See in that upper corner right around there, there's a good chance that, well, we're gonna get into that, the pre-cut or you know, the uh, trim in the hoop. And 
of course, that would be another reason why you trim, you pre-cut. Okay, so we're going to zoom through so that we can get to the applique section. So the first color of an applique, is, applique section is the placement guide. And that's just going to be a straight stitch, and it's outlining the applique. It is slightly larger than the than the tack down. And that's because if you pre-cut your applique fabric, this is the stitch sequence. This is the actual element of the file that you would use to cut your applique. And we're going to get into that so you get a better understanding. And then next up is the tack down. And now you can see, here's my tack down. I'll zoom in so you can get a really good look. It's a zigzag. And it is centered, well, that placement guide is centered underneath that zigzag. So that means if I cut my applique fabric the exact size of the placement guide, then my tack down is going to grab the edge of the applique fabric. And that's important. You'll see why in a little while. But that's the whole key is to get that tack down to tack down to grab the applique fabric and the outside fabric or the host fabric, meaning, or the base, I guess that's the boast, the base fabric. Oh, I'm confusing myself. Okay. So then we'll advance through that. And you can see now it's going to stitch the beautiful satin, and that's going to give you complete coverage of the um, raw edge of the applique. And then the next elements would be interior elements. And here we have some pretty uh, details in the flower center, and then just some more like, kind of echo satin outlines, and then the flower centers right there. So that's the anatomy of an applique design. Applique designs can also come in a different version. And I just made this really quick design here so you could see this version. I'm going to use that simulator again. And I am in embroidery tool shed. Well, I'm actually in, you know, the full blown all of Dime software, but all of this uh, Stitch Simulator is available in embroidery tool shed, our free software program. So you can open any design that you own in Embroidery Toolshed, use the Stitch Simulator and view the actual stitching sequence. So here we'll start. There's our placement guide, which is a straight stitch. And look at that. Our tack down is also a running stitch, but it's inside the placement guide. So the line that's inside is my tack down. And that is intended for pre-cut applique. Okay, so now we'll continue on and then we'll get our satin. There, there's our satin. And now you can see how that satin edge is um, completely covering the raw edge and it is still centered over the placement guide. Okay, so that's kind of the anatomy of an applique design. So for those of you who maybe have an applique design on your computer, but you've never stitched it, open it up in Embroidery Toolshed and use that stitch simulator. That's that little like time wheel, that gauge up here. And when you select that, it will allow you to move the slider bar so you can fast forward through it. You can also use the arrows and just let it travel at its own pace. Okay, easy peasy. Now let's head back over to PowerPoint so you can see what we're going to talk about next. Well, what is an applique design? We just did that. Sorry that I didn't advance that. Regardless of um, whatever kind of applique fabric you're going to use and whether you're going to pre-cut or you're going to trim in the hoop, you should apply a some type of adhesive to the wrong side of the applique fabric. So I like to use Fuse Me, which is a fusible web here at Dime under our exquisite brand. And I apply that to the wrong side of my applique fabric. Sometimes I opt for the 505 temporary spray adhesive. Again, I would spray that on the wrong side of the applique fabric. And in that case, I place my applique fabric in our little spray tent and spray it, and then it's prepped for the actual applique application. 
Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, and Catherine Barker, you want to know, did you miss much? You're late. No, you didn't miss much. We just kind of greeted everybody, and I did just talk through the anatomy of an applique design. So if you're not familiar with an applique design, at the end of today's program, you can rewatch just that beginning, and that'll bring you up. Okay, uh, all right, so let's see when to trim in the hoop. So these are some guidelines that uh, we use here at Dime on when we're, when it's possible to trim in the hoop. So let's take a look. If it's a run stitch tack down, this is when you can trim in the hoop. Now why? Well, a run stitch tack down is just a straight line. So I'm going to be able to get my scissors really close to that tack down and slice off a nice clean edge of the applique fabric. Unlike if it is a satin stitch that we already showed, when else is it um, applicable to trim in the hoop? That would be simple shapes, right? Just squares, rectangles, really simple things that are easy to cut with scissors without a lot of um, points. So let's see, raw edge applique is also appropriate for trimming in the hoop because often you want to have some fabric extending beyond that uh, tack down. So that, that's kind of a quilting topic. It's a little off the path of what we're really talking about here. So when do you want to pre-cut? Well, truth be told, I pre-cut almost all the time. It just gives me a more professional finish and that's important. So if you're doing e-stitch, so that's the buttonhole stitch, and often we want to um, use a monofilament thread or a thread that matches our applique or go for high contrast and use black. Uh, but either way, I mean, any of those three choices that you use, you would definitely not want any fabric extending beyond that e-stitch. So you would, um, you would uh, pre-cut. And also an e-stitch does not have a tack down. So it's not gonna give you the benefit of that extra run all the way around and hold down the fabric. So you have to nail cutting out that um, applique fabric so that it's gonna precisely fit into the placement guide. And that placement guide is actually stitched right underneath that e-stitch outline. All right. When else to pre-cut? Odd shapes. Look at this crazy uh, embroidery design. How fun is this? But look at those spiky elements and inner curves. They're very difficult to trim. Also inner openings like the it's two small circles in, in the B and the uh, openings in the O. They can be really tricky. Imagine if they are tack down onto a base fabric and you're trying to work away that little opening. Now, best to pre-cut that for sure. Okay, also uh, inner corners. These can be really hard to trim in the hoop nice and cleanly. So I find that it's best to pre-cut those types of applique. Okay, our uh, open book applique at the top, that's a layered applique. So there's the white fabric is one piece of applique and then the yellow is another. It's easy to pre-cut these shapes because then you don't have to worry about uh, maybe catching the, another layer of applique with the scissors while you're trimming and it's less bulk, right? So it's just easier to, uh, and more professional finish. Also, whenever you're doing repeats, even though these six circular designs all appear to be different, their applique size of that inner circle is the exact same size. So it's a great idea to pre-cut that. It's just going to save time so that you're not taking the hoop off the machine to trim and reattaching it every time. So uh, that's another great reason why to pre-cut. Uh, pre so some fabrics are just tricky to trim in the hoop, like velvet, cork, vinyl, anything that's thick or napped, I would pre-cut because it's just going to make your embroidery experience more enjoyable. You won't be fighting with that nap. And chances are you're not going to get the satin coverage that you'll need because you'll have like chunky fabric extending beyond that tack down. Ugh. So that's kind of a 
kind of a bummer. Okay, so let's see. When else to pre-cut? Well, I showed you earlier in the anatomy of an applique design that you can have a zigzag or you can have a straight stitch. And when you have a zigzag, you should absolutely pre-cut that applique. In fact, your digitizer, whoever created that design that you have intended for you to pre-cut when they have a zigzag because the zigzag is going to capture the edge of the applique and hold it onto the base fabric. Unlike a run stitch where it's um, the tack down is just one straight run that it's really unlikely that you would have success. So let's go ahead over to the overhead cam and take a closer look at some of these. So here is our pretty hero, right? This is the, the design that we used in our promotion of today's event. And you can see just how attractive it is. Uh, all of my, all the raw edges of the applique fabric are covered in the satin, right? There's nothing extending out beyond the edge. I have nice clean corners, my, in, my inside, you know, points are really nice and clean. And that's really only achieved with a pre-cut fabric. So what happens if you don't pre-cut or if you don't use a fusible? Well, here's the hot mess we have going on here, right? We had, look at all these puckers and, you know, you only have to turn away just a moment to make this happen. So uh, if this had been fused down, then I most certainly wouldn't have any of those puckers. Here's an example of not trimming close enough. Now we did exaggerate this for sure. I think that you and I are capable of trimming a little bit better than that, but you may have some unwanted applique fabric in tiny little areas extending out that is really impossible to get. Like, look at that any, right? That, ugh, that's, you would be dissatisfied with that. So if this brown fabric had been pre-cut, we wouldn't have any of those issues. And sometimes if we're just slapping down a piece of fabric like we did here, right? We did a really oversized piece. Sometimes we misjudge and it's too small. Now my applique fabric is not reaching to my satin edge and that's totally frustrating. What do you do if this happens? Well, I want to point out one thing. There's also some other puckers in here because this was not fused down. I think you can see that kind of ridge, that wrinkle right there across the fabric. That's because we didn't use a fusible. If this was a, a finished, you know, if this was on a garment or something that I really needed that embroidery to be beautiful, what I would do is I would either use my stitch ripper to get rid of those satin um, outlines or I would just place another piece of applique fabric over the whole thing, start over and be, pay more attention, be more uh, careful and make that happen. Okay, so let's see. I wanted to take a look at that example because that's kind of, you know, moving over to thread, right? We got some weird colors going on there, right? So, We'll come back to this because I want to talk about that variegated thread in the center and then these two elements. But first, I want to tell you that sometimes you're going to pre-cut and sometimes you're going to trim in the hoop. This is a really fun layered applique design that uses Caesars HTV. In fact, this is our wicked wonder that we showed last week. So here we have the black flock. So that's kind of velvety. Oh, I love that. And the purple is velvety also. So both of these substrates, this Caesar HTV tears in the hoop. I could just rip it right off after that satin stitch is completed. But the Aurora, this reflective look at that. Oh, isn't that beautiful? His inner wings. Look how that just catches the light and just shimmers and shines. This is a product that you do have to pre-cut. You can't tear it away like you do the flock or the glitter that we often use here at Dime. So it's just so much fun to incorporate both techniques. You know, the strip flock material, this uh, kind of velvety 
material is easy to use. It's so fast because you're just ripping it away. So I only had to pre-cut this section, the, the two green sections. So this design, even though it has all that large impact, right? It looks like a big moth and it is a big moth. It's about almost four inches wide. But because of the impact of the fabric, or in this case, HTV, it has a lot of impact for a small design without a lot of thread buildup. So that is just so amazing. Isn't it fun? So much fun. Okay. So let me see where we are over here. That's when we do both. Now, sometimes when we're doing applique, we want a fussy cut. Look at this little purse. It's just an adorable little cloth, a cl uh, clutch, I mean. But notice that precisely placed piece of fabric for the applique. That's a beautiful cave faucet fabric with his big blooms, right? And I fussy cut that. So let me show you some of those techniques over here. Let me clean up my mess to make sure I have access to everything that I need. Oh, you know, I have a whole, well, we'll do this because we're talking about it and then we'll come back on, come back to how to trim. So here's pretty blooms. Aren't they pretty? What a really lovely piece of um, fabric. It would be difficult to incorporate this into an applique unless you were doing what we, I, well, what everybody calls fussy cutting. So here I have created a window template. I printed a template from Embroidery Toolshed of my applique design, and then I cut out the center so that I could see that big satin outline and see what would be inside. And that is just a beautiful element, Don't, wouldn't you agree? And then here we have uh, a smaller flower. Now I might get some of those yellow um, little background fabric here, but I don't think that's unattractive. I think that's perfectly acceptable. It just adds another element to um, my applique. So, you know, often these busy prints, we think we can't incorporate into um, our embroidery, but we can with little bits. Now, again, this is another K faucet, be beautiful seashells, all this big bundle spray of beautiful shells. So here's a design that frankly, this looks like a blob, right? Until you put it on top of that shell. And now we have that gorgeous Nautilus filling that shape. And that could decorate a handbag, a garment, you name it, really fun. And then sometimes uh, we have geometric prints that we want to pull apart. And yeah, you could cut them apart and just use a fusible web and not finish the edge. Or you could, you know, fussy cut so that you have that to fit absolutely perfectly. And now, you know, when I apply that to my fabric, I don't have all this other fabric out there, just that one. So that's kind of fun. All right. And then lastly, here's a way to fussy cut that pretty flower. Oh, here's our hero, right? This is the same flower. And I've print that in a window type template. And now we have these big starburst, but I can reposition that. And maybe I like the blues, right? With a little bit of green on the outside, or maybe you like all the greens, whatever it is, but this gives you an opportunity to audition your applique right on the fabric without cutting anything. It's just a really fun way to um, decorate and add print to your applique that maybe normally you wouldn't do that. Okay, so let's see if we have any um, questions before we get back into how we pre-cut our applique because there's three different methods of that. So let's see, uh, Jennifer Alexander has said the E-stitch is also known as the blanket stitch, so very true. Um, let's see. And Jeannie, uh, straighter, you love the moth colors, aren't they fun? I know all of September here at Dime for the, for, uh, we're going to be celebrating Halloween and using all those colors in all of our designs. So I think you'll have some fun with that. Okay. So let's see how to pre-cut the applique. So let's go back over to, to PowerPoint. So you can see there are three different methods, templates, and again, you're going to print them out of Embroidery Toolshed. In the hoop, 
Yes, you can actually stitch, use your embroidery machine to create a pre-cut applique, or you can use a digital cutter. So let's head over. And um, again, this is the hero that we're going to be using. We're going to be talking about this design. And I have the three different techniques. So the first one, I'll just go ahead and cover this right now. This is our, our flower. And I did this one on a digital cutter. Now notice on the back, I have Fuse Me already applied and I kept the paper on the back, you know, on the wrong side of the applique when I placed this on my digital cutter. So I fuse that Fuse Me to the wrong side and then I send the file over to my cutter and I mirror image the design and place this fabric on the mat, fabric side down, adhesive, uh, the protective paper up, and then I cut, let the machine cut it out. And then when I take it off the mat and remove that fusible web, it's going to fit perfectly right inside. So I know it's the right fit. And you'll notice if you take a really close look, it's a little smaller than my satin outline, which is just what I want because I want that satin stitch to cover the edge of the fabric, just like it has, and also the base fabric. So it's covering both sides, both sections. Okay, so that's our digital version. And here is our template version. And I print that on the um, print and stick target template paper. I have a little, have a little hitch in my get along here. That's fine. And I would just place that right on my applique fabric. Just bear with me one minute so I can go grab that. We'll move this off. So I would just place that right on here, right side up, right side up. And because it sticks, I don't have to worry about it falling off. And then I just take my scissors and I'm going to trim right on that line, just right on that line. And then I can reuse that. I can, you know, save it if I know this is a, a an applique design that I'm going to use over and over again. So I'll just keep it on my uh, protective paper for the Fuse Me and I have that ready to go. Now for the machine. <clears throat> oh, I think I was supposed to. Okay, I didn't see my sample here. So let's repeat that. Okay, so here is the actual batik fabric and I have the uh, fuse, my fuse me on the wrong side. And now I would place this. Now notice this was not mirror imaged in any fashion because I don't need to do that. So then I just go and I stitch. I mean, I cut right on that outline and then I have my applique piece prepared. Next up is in a hoop. Let's take a look at the wrong side. I have my Fuse Me applied to the wrong side of the applique fabric, and I have stitched color one of the applique, just that placement guide. And I'm gonna take this out of the hoop and I'm gonna trim right on that line, right on that line. And when I take it out of the hoop, it's going to be the same size as my digital version. It'll be the same size as this, and I know that it will fit just perfectly in that off, in that um, fashion. So that's the three different ways that you can pre-cut your appliques. And you know what the beauty of pre-cutting applique is? Once you have those pieces prepared and you are ready to actually do the applique at the machine on the garment or the bag, whatever, or maybe a quilt block, then the process is so fast because it's the trimming that takes the long time, the longest time. And now you don't have to take the hoop off the machine and reattach during the applique process. You're just going to position this right down on that placement guide. And, you know, of course, you'll remove that protective paper. And I even press it right in the hoop before I stitch the tack down. So it's fast, 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 fast and fun. All right. Let's see what's up next. Oh, thread. <laughs> when you're printing a small applique on your template, can you reuse the rest of the paper again? Can it go through the printer again? Yes. It, well, um, the paper will 
withstand, a, a, let's say, another reheating, right? Another run through the printer. You would have to be careful if you're going to, like, if you have a hole in the paper, you just want to make sure that it's feeding properly, right? So position your template down, like, at one corner so then you can just trim off that area and then just let it feed through properly. But yeah. Oh, Alreen Wilcox, and shame on me. She says, great time to use hoop and press pads to press that applique. You know it, girl. Definitely. That's exactly what we would do. So let's find that so we can show folks exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so here is um, our hoop and press pad for our five by seven. Now, if I was smart like Reen, and now this is not the applique, this is the pre-cut, but it's gonna look pretty similar, right? When I place my applique on this side and I wanna tack it down, I would do it in that fashion. Or we can even set it just on top. It's the same size as the hoop. And now I don't have to worry about my um, applique getting you know, misaligned, right? So if I'm using temporary spray adhesive, then I know that it's going to stay in place. If I'm using the Fuse Me, then I would position my hoop on top of this hoop and press mat and press right here at this time. And then it would stick in place just like we planned. All right. Good point, Reen. And Reen's going to be back here to talk to us a little bit about applique and in the hoop and all kinds of fun stuff in a couple of weeks. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. Which digital cutter is your favorite? Evelyn, that's the one that's working properly today. <laughs> I can't, you know, uh, here at Dime, currently we're using the Brother Scan and Cut, but um, we've used all kinds and we don't really have any complaints about any of them. So let's see, what is the best iron to use? Yep, we use a mini iron here. We use a little, so Dritz, um, kind of looking for it. It should be close by. But, oh, yep, here it is. I'll bring it over to the camera. You can find these um, everywhere, right? They're really common now, but it's just a little nice iron. I need to clean my sole plate, but isn't that nice? And it fits so well in that hoop. Let's get that press pad back so you can see just how nice this fits. I mean, it's like the perfect match. There are, you know, tiny craft irons that are kind of like a wand with a little shoe about the mm, about a two inch triangle. You know, it, they're a little too small for me, right? So I really like that. I really like that. Okay. And let's see. Gene Strader, you want to know about my earrings? Yes, they are uh, my lace earring collection, and these are fringe on the bottom and lace uh, on that hoop. And then I also added some crystals. Aren't they fun? I know I'm all decked out today. So fun. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, do you stitch? Do you stitch the in the hoop pre-cut with the same color thread as the applique? Hmm. You know, I don't. I stitch it in a contrasting color, just like I did here. To, to pop over to the overhead, be, please. Um, because I, you know, I, I'm not 25 anymore, girls. Let's face it. So it's just easier to see. And well, here you can't even really see it that well. I did it in black. That's actually black thread. And it just makes it easy for me to see because I'm going to trim right on that line. A thread or two will be visible, in, you know, in the finished project. And, well, not the finished project, but in the finished pre-cut applique. But then when I place it on the base fabric and stitch that satin, you'll never see it. So uh, I just make it easy on yourself. Is it, If you're doing white on white on white, then yes, please use a very light colored thread. Don't use black. You wouldn't want any bleed through. But nah, I wouldn't really, you know, make it easy on yourself. For sure. Okay, let's see what other kind of comments we have. Uh, what is the advantage to previewing the embroidery stitch out in embroidery tool shed? Okay, well, here, let's jump over there and I'll show you that again because it is actually really pretty cool. So when I preview it, like if you purchase this design, you'd be like, great, I have an applique design and just jump on the machine, right? Maybe you hoop your base fabric and you grab a piece of applique fabric and you're not going to, you're not even thinking about pre-cutting, but 
if you were to advance through this design and notice that the tack down is actually a zigzag, you're immediately going to know, oh, I need to pre-cut this because you're not going to be able to stitch close enough to the edge of that applique fabric to have no fabric extending beyond the uh, satin stitch here. So there, you can see where that satin stitch, right? That beautiful blue satin is just a, like not even a whole millimeter wider than the edge of the satin tack down, the zigzag tack down. So this design by running through that simulator is immediately telling you this is intended to be a pre-cut applique as where this other applique design is not. That is that, see that second line that's inside right here? That's your place, your tack down. The placement guide is on the outside. The tack down is on the inside and that satin is covering both. But notice how you have a little more room between that tack down and the edge of the outer satin so that you are able to trim the applique fabric. Look how much space you have there. You don't have that in a zigzag tack down. So that's the benefit of using a software like Embroidery Toolshed, which is free, and uh, just setting yourself up for success. It's always best to know what you're getting yourself into, right? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, Jay Bernard, you even found a midi iron in Portugal. Awesome. That's awesome. Happy for you. Okay. Let's see. What's next? What am I doing next? Anybody know? Goodness. Oh, thread. So yeah, let's move on to thread. Goodness, there's so many possibilities, right? And uh, let's see. Okay, so we're going to start with our pretty sample here where we have matching thread. The yellow is almost the perfect match to the applique fabric, right? And you kind of have a choice. Now, my stitches sister, Marie, she likes to select a thread that matches the base fabric. That's just what she likes. Kind of gives you the same effect, to be honest with you, because then that fabric blends with the background, leaving just the applique to shine. And really, when you match your thread to the applique, the same thing is occurring. You are separating the applique from the background fabric visually. And so I love to match my applique. Now, what if we got one of those samples out that we didn't really like so much, right? This one, lots of contrast here, right? I personally don't like this at all. And yes, this is this brown is probably not the ideal choice for a flower, but this is just to illustrate highly contrasting thread that contrasts not only with the base fabric, but also with the, the applique fabric. So it's your choice what you decide to do. There are, you know, everybody has their own preferences, but in my case, that's what I like to do. Now, I did have some fun inside. This is not applique on the inside. This is all one big piece of fabric of you, as you have seen earlier in the program. Here's that applique section right here, but it does have accent stitches inside of that large applique. And uh, some of it is satin stitch, what I would call echoing. It's kind of shadowing the shape of the outer out outline. And then here I added a beautiful variegated thread and I'm gonna bring up the pretty sample so you can get a better look at that. Look how that is just so luscious. So it has some yellow, it has some purple, orange and pink. So it not only blends with that applique fabric, but it also adds interest. Just like when you're looking at a real flower, they're not always all pink or all yellow, right? They often have some extra colors that are accents. And then of course we have our actual flower center. And I do often like to make that really pop and have, you know, use highly contrasting fabrics. Now that black might be a little harsh. Maybe I should have gone with eh, a gray or maybe even a red, something like that. You have a lot of choices. Here on our um, really fun moth, right? We used uh, matching fabric for the black outline. 
the neon green on the aurora and the purple on that purple flock. So it lets the appliques truly be the star of the design. We don't have anything competing with the base fabric or the applique fabrics. They just are letting those applique fabrics be the star and shine. Woohoo! So much fun. But going back to my beautiful sample, I just love this variegated thread. Well, if you know our fabric line, you might wonder, gosh, what medley variegated thread is that? Well, it's new. It's new. And I'm so happy to introduce five new medley thread colors. So let's go to PowerPoint so you can see. And if I were wise, I'd have that up the way it should be. There we go. This is our new product reveal. And here we have five new colors and they're on special today. Only $6.79 for the five different colors. And we are introducing, believe it or not, a medley metallic thread. So think about that. Medley in our line here means it's variegated. It's a series of different colors all on one spool. And metallic means it's going to shine. So let's go over and take a look at those pretty, pretty, pretty threads. So we'll start with our metallic. Why don't we do that? Let's clear this out so you get a nice clean look. Get rid of the iron. And look at that beautiful metallic medley. I'm going to bring that up close so that you can get a better look because right now it's not that interesting. But wait do you see when I bring it up. Look at the colors. Here we have some turquoise. We have some terracotta. We have a gold and a silver all in the same spool. It is just luscious. And this is what the spool like, looks like. So this is not King Star. This is made um, in, our in our medley line, our variegated line. But I'm just going to kind of spool this out a little bit so you can see the color variation, right, like right here, you can see those terracottas, aren't they beautiful? And then we go to silver and over here we have some turquoise. What a lovely, lovely metallic variegated that is. I think maybe you'll find a lot of different uses for that. We love it, of course, for those beautiful running stitches. They just show so well. Now let's move over to our new colors in the variegated. Oh, which shall we start with? Well, why don't I start with Sherbet, which is the color that I used on the sample. So this pretty interior was actually created with this spool of thread. You know, it's really funny how when you look at a variegated on its spool, it can look really different, right? And like, you know, it, we have hundreds of these spools and actually everyone looks a little bit different until you stitch them out. So let's take a closer look at that. Here we have um, those beautiful, we have a neon green in there, a yellow, a pink, a purple, and an orange, I think. Well, here they are right down here. And I've stitched this out in our color play font so that you could see what, how pretty that looks. These are just running stitches. They're about a 2.2 stitch length. So you can see what they would look like as a quilting stitch. Here is our satin. And you're going to notice that what happens with this variegated thread is we start with a purple, we go orange, pink, yellow, orange, pink, and purple again. So even though it's four colors, there's actually six different uh, segments of color, right? We repeat two twice. And in this case, we've repeated the orange and the yellow. And that just helps spread out the light yellow and the purple, the darkest and the lightest, and just gives you a really pretty variegated look. Definitely love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Barbara George, you're asking what font is that? So in our Word Art and Stitches and Perfect Embroidery Pro, the name of this font is called Color Play, and you can find it in your software. Oh, and let's take a look at what it looks like stitched out in a stipple, in kind of a, you know, an artistic stipple. It's an open fill, 
kind of erratic run stitches, but isn't that attractive? What a lovely fill that would be for, you know, kind of free motion painting or, you know, thread painting. All right, so another crowd favorite is jewel tones. So let's go ahead and look at jewel tones. So jewel tones is made exactly the same way as sherbet, but look how different the spools look, right? This looks like it's, wow, a whole lot of orange and a whole lot of light colors, but really it's the same, the same kind of repeat. So here's our jewel tone. So let's get a better look at that. So in this instance, we have a beautiful um, peacock color and then a red and a aqua and a purple. And then we're going to repeat the uh, this, um, I guess that's the aqua and the uh, red again. But isn't, aren't they just gorgeous? We just love how these just shine through. Looks really lovely on light color fabric because you kind of have mid and dark tones. So you have lots of options there on how to, where to stitch it. And here is its um, kind of artistic globe. Let's just call this the globe, right? I love it. I love it. Really fun. Okay, and of course, if you know me, this, then you're probably guessing that this might be my favorite. And we named it Blue Ocean because it has all the blues that you would find in a beautiful ocean scene. The lightest blues, and then a medium and a darker blue. So it's a, um, so I would call this a mono uh, variegated thread, meaning it's all in the blue family. So that will complement lots of your projects because, you know, it's just all the blues. And um, this is what it looks like on the spool. But we are loving that. Now, I think that truly does look like a big drop of water, right? And just so lovely. I love the light blue, the dark, the medium. I don't, every one of them is my favorite, hard to choose. Okay. And then we have fresh. Now where has, oh, fresh is on the black. So take a look at fresh. Here's the spool. So the spool has a very, very light green, a medium tone, and the blue. So let's take a look at that underneath the camera so you can see what it's going to look like as a running stitch. And here's your satin. Subtle color changes, right? The values are all pretty similar. There is a blue that's a little, little bit darker than our lightest green, but it just gives a beautiful blend. It almost reads like a solid under this camera, but it's not. It does have all those different elements that really add uh, interest. And Jennifer Alexander, you like the blue ocean. I agree, I do too. But I also like the fresh. It, now this is really light on the white, but sometimes you just want a really delicate look. So that's super fun. And of course it's September, which is right before Halloween. So we couldn't ignore that. And look at this fun one. Oh my, I think this is definitely going to be a crowd favorite. So we called it Halloween. And here it is on the spool. As you can see, it looks a little darker on the spool than really it is when you stitch it out. So it's got a neon green, an orange, a purple, and a gray. All the colors that we love to embrace during uh, Halloween season, right? And it's going to stitch out in this fashion and in that striped satin. Isn't it fun? And in the color play font, oh my, it really pops. We're going to, you're going to be seeing a lot of this this fall. I know we'll be using it. Now, don't forget, these are all on sale. They are only $16.97, I think. No, six, $6.79 for each spool, which is actually a very reasonable price for a variegated thread. You know, variegated threads can be really pricey. And then the um, Medley Metallic is $17.95. I think you'll find that that is really a beautiful metallic uh, variegated thread. And uh, it's, yeah, we had a lot of fun stitching with that for sure. So let's see, Gail Tips, you just bought some Halloween colors and metallic. Well, you have some more that you have to uh, check out. Let's see. And Jennifer, you say Halloween is giving you hocus pocus vibes. I love it. And Evelyn, you think that the uh, fresh might be nice on orange. Good call. I think so. That would be gorgeous on orange. Absolutely. So 
you know, I know many of you are always wondering what's happening here at Dime, what's coming up next. So I wanted to share with you that on September 19th, this Tuesday, Ashley is going to be uh, hosting Software Success. And it's part two of the powerful one, Perfect Embroidery Pro. That is our full digitizing software program. And, you know, Ashley is a wizard in, in PEP. We like to call it PEP. And she uh, is going to be sharing all of her tips and techniques. This is part two. If you missed part one, you most certainly can watch it on YouTube or Facebook. If they're still up there, we leave them up there all the time. And um, uh, so you'll, uh, I hope you'll take advantage of that because, boy, she's just chock full of knowledge. And if you don't, currently subscribe to us or like us on Facebook, please do. We're about to hit a really big milestone on Facebook. So all of your likes really mean uh, an awful lot to us. But here's how you can stay in, um, I know, well, here's how you can find out what we're doing here next. In this video, we'll show you how to subscribe to a YouTube channel and follow a Facebook page through your phone. Let's start with YouTube. First, open your YouTube app on your phone once you're on your home page, search for the designs in machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. Click on it and go to the channel page. Once on the channel page, click the subscribe button. And that's it. You're now subscribed to the channel. Now let's move on to Facebook. First, open your Facebook app. Once on your home page, search for designs in machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. Once on the profile page, click the three dots and select the follow button. And that's it. We are now following the page. Thanks for watching. And on September 21st, next week, Ashley is going to be here with me. We're going to be having a great time using HTV, some of those Caesar products, and our cut and stitch software program. So we're going to have a good time. I hope that you will. Um, I hope that you will join us for that. Uh, and the week after on the 29th i guess or the 28th reem wilcoxon will be joining me so i hope you'll stay come in and join us then but for now I, it's just about time to show that on the house design and I, let's take a look at what you've been stitching Oh, look at these fun things. I love that hot stuff. I love that hot stuff. Now, Paula, thanks so much. You think the new threads are beautiful. They sure are. Let's take a look at them on the overhead cam because I have them all splayed out there. Aren't they just lovely, those new variegated? And Gail Tips, you said that usually you missed out on our sales when you were home today and you ordered the new threads. Yippee. Yippee Halloween. Well, I, you know, I, these sale, these specials, these sales, they're good for a week. So even if you're not here on a Thursday, please, you know, uh, take advantage of the specials and it's always on our homepage. So whatever we're showcasing here on Facebook or YouTube on Thursday, if you go to dzgns.com, that's going to be up in the banner, the special for the whole week. So please take advantage of it. We want you to, um, to do that. So I know you've all been waiting to see what this week's on the house is. I told you it's a Halloween theme and here we go. It is that pretty moth that I showed you in earlier today program. And many of you thought it was really fun, really cool. So that is your free design this week. And remember they're here all year all 52 weeks they are up on our website but you need to take them down now right because at the end of december 2023 at the end of this year we're going to pull them all down they're only good for a year but they are up there every week we keep adding so if you missed earlier ones go grab them go grab them for sure 
So, yep, there's our little moth. And I thought you would really enjoy that. It was so fun to stitch out. I had a really good time doing it. And just in case you're wondering, you know, into next week, I have Ashley here. The week after that, I have Reen Wilcox and, and Sue Brown will be back. They'll both be in the house. And uh, Sue, of course, is going to be here because I'll be revealing the On the House project. And it will definitely have a Halloween theme. So I hope that you are downloading these designs because they might just be a part of it. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure sharing our tips on a machine embroidery applique. And I can't wait to see you here again next week. Bye for now.